Hey guys, I'm back from Prairie to Shane. Um, I had a, you know, it was a good learning experience for me down there on the river. Um, these river tournaments, you know, it, it's good learning experience on what you need to do and what times and stuff. But anyways, I wanted to thank you guys. Um, I said I was going to do a giveaway um, of Tackle. I hit 30,000 fans or friends on Facebook. Um, that was that's unimaginable for me. I can't I can't believe it's still actually and it's still growing. I think we're at thirty thousand four hundred and fifty or something, almost thirty thousand five hundred. So it's crazy. Um, but I, I I absolutely love it. I love commenting to you guys back. Um, I know a lot of people message me questions and everything, and I don't mind that. Keep them coming. Um, but uh, anyway, so I. I plan on giving, I'm, I'm going to do a giveaway here, and it's basically all the tackle that I used in Prairie to Shane on the river. Um, I'll give you guys samples of that, or one person I'm actually, I'm going to draw it out of a hat here. Um, I did put up my giveaway um, rules, and for the people that did it all, I put their names in a hat here, and I'm going to draw it. Um, and that was on the Fish Addictions uh video clip on just to share it and post it and then also what you liked about the outdoors in one word um, and the best part of the clip and that it was just simple but here i'm going to show you some of the stuff i used on the river um, one of the key things that i found was wing dams fishing wing dams casting wing dams or you know just kind of going real slow along the face of the wing dams and i was using this berkeley digger mostly the eight and a half i a lot of the wing dams i found the water was really high um, they do have smaller diggers but what i mean by high is the amount of water that's over the top of the wing dams so a lot i was looking for wing dams where that were like five feet where the water was only like five feet over the wing dam so you could cast up to it reel in this digger would hit the rocks and then it would go down the face of the face of the wing dam down into the you know the kind of the bowl where these fish sit when they're hungry um, so that ended up being a key um, lure for me especially on day two but you can hear the rattle in these things so there was another lure I used um, on those feet on the wing dams it was a DT 10 Rapala DT 10 um, but I did you know day two I had pretty good luck with this but most of the week um, the digger was working for me but there's a lot more you can hear the difference in the rattle and there's not as much rattle in here and I think this would just make those fish you know irritated but these do work also they work pretty good too um, some of the other stuff that I did I did a lot of pitching um, by the way these are going in the giveaway both of those will go in the giveaway um, I did a lot of pitching also so I was using, you know, light jig heads, quarter ounce. Um, there was quite a bit of current, so you could kind of let it tumble. Uh, but these ripple shads uh, seem to be, I, you know, I don't know what it is about these things on the river, but they just work. They work everywhere, actually. Um, but when you, with the paddle tail, when you pitch it out and, you, and you're pulling back, it, you can feel the vibration. There's little ribs on these ripple shads, and you can actually feel that vibration on there. And the tail is just, it's got a lot of action on it. It's an awesome plastic to use pretty much everywhere. So I'll give you a bag of ripple shads. That'll go with. Um, and then some jig heads also. You know, these are these are eighth ounce, eighth ounce, quarter ounce. Just depends on where you're pitching and how much current there is. So those will go with. Uh, what else did we use? Oh, we use bottom bouncers. Um, and I mostly use two ounce bottom bouncers pretty much everywhere it's standard, unless it's just really shallow, then I'll go to a one ouncer, but pretty standard for me is two ounces. I like to, you know, you want that 45 degree angle, but you want to feel that, that bottom bouncer down there. And I was running, let's see, these flicker rigs, um, off of these in, into like deep holes out there that I'd find that would go, especially like the end of the Wisconsin river where it was dumping out. Bottom bouncer flicker rig with a crawler on it. It's a crawler harness. Um, it worked good. You know, we caught, 
we didn't catch any big fish there, but it is kind of a, you know, you can get bigger fish there. Uh, we caught smaller fish, but this works good on the river also. So I'll throw that in there. Um, these swimming grubs, more jigs for pitching. These work good. Um, also, in, you know, instead of using the bottom bouncer, there's these little, like they're called like little egg weights or um, uh, I don't know what you call them, but it's basically a lead weight with a tie on the top. And you can do, use three ways with that. And I'll show you more of that in my video, but instead of using the bottom bouncer, what a lot of guys do is use these weights because then you can, you can change your dropper length on how far you want it off the bottom. Um, and then you run a line out the back from that. And I did a lot of slow death also. And I'll throw a package of slow death in here too. I didn't put that up here, um, but I'll, I'll get that. We'll send one of those in there too. But basically what I was doing is using this egg weight, um, drop down, and then I had like a three foot leader. You know, I do pretty much everything is three foot. And then I tie a slow death hook on there. Um, and Berkeley's got great hooks on that, that Fusion 19 hooks are, are awesome. So that was another thing I used. Um, and then to tie those three ways, there's little three-way uh, um, swivels here. I don't know if you can see that. They're tiny here. Or you can just use, like, you know, two ball-bearing swivels with a clip on them also. You can just put two on your line. These work good, too. Um, there might be a little bit more tangles this way. I, I find sometimes, but I do use these. Um, and then also off that, uh, that dropper system, basically I'm using an eight ounce or uh, eight pound XT on that, on my droppers, on my three ways. And for that dropper, a lot of times I'll use those egg weights or I'll use pencil weights. I use a lot of pencil weights when I'm by the wing dams and stuff. Um, you can just feel that bottom and it kind of ticks. And a lot of times if you're going to lose stuff, this, if this gets snagged up, there's less of a chance of this getting snagged up compared to these, these little balls here. But if you do, a lot of times that dropper, I use a smaller poundage on my droppers for line. So if that breaks, then you just lose the weight. You keep all your other stuff. And uh, what else did we use? Oh, the three, the three ways was slow death. I also did three ways with uh, flicker minnows. Um, I'll give you one of those. I think they call that a Denver rig when you're using a crankbait on there. Um, and then just a big weight on the bottom. So you got the Dubuque rig. It's got a big hook that you, you rig up on the bottom and you put a plastic on it or a crawler. I was tipping it with a crawler a lot of times and catching a lot of fish that way. And then you got about a three foot um, snell off of that Dubuque rig, off your three way that you have on your line. And um, I was either putting a, another, just a plain hook with a leech, or I was using crankbaits. I mean, I tried everything. Slow death off of that. Um, caught a lot of fish doing that, but um, just nothing big. But, you know, there wasn't a lot of big fish out there. I mean, you catch an occasional 23, 24-incher. Um, I know there's big fish there. We just didn't get them that time. Well, while I was out there, anyway... And then for trolling, um, I was using the flicker minnows, number sevens. You know, on day one, I, I made the mistake of going up to pool nine, and I shouldn't have. My number was, I had number 84. So I did make the lock. I was fast enough to make the, the first lock with everybody in it. But everybody went out, and, you know, I'm essentially fishing wing dams or day markers, and so was everybody else. And my number was you know, 84. So, you know, I was one of the last boats to get out of the lock. Um, and so a lot of those spots were taken. So I ended up trolling up there, which was great at first. You know, I started catching fish, 15s, 16s, you know, on day one, right away. But they opened up the locks up there and it, it allowed all this eelgrass to come out. And I don't know if you've ever tried to troll when there's a lot of, you know, stuff floating on the water. It's, it's nearly impossible. Well, this was so bad that you could hardly get your your lure in the water, 
you know, just to get down before it had stuff on it. So it made it really difficult. And then, you know, all my wing dams were, you know, full of people and day markers. So I tried to get back down to 10 and then there was a barge in the, in the lock. So it was just, it was one thing after the next on day one and I felt bad, but you know, it's just, I, you live and learn and I, and I won't ever do that again. So on day two, I stayed down on nine. I, I casted uh, wing dams, which, you know, I was going to do on day one. It was a last minute decision to go up to nine. Um, and I should have, and I probably would have cashed a check if I would have just stayed there and fished wing dams. I actually, on day two, I fished one wing dam and had 10 pounds. So, you know, it's just, it's just the way it goes, live and learn. But thank you guys for... Um, following me 30,000 fans it's it's crazy to even think about I'm super excited um, make sure you check out my uh, YouTube channel Robert Cardenas Fishing I'll be posting videos I'll do a video for uh, Prairie to Shane also and I'm doing Sakakawea I got a bunch of stuff and and hopefully some new stuff coming up too some some stuff I'd like to talk to you guys about uh, which I'm kind of excited about so that's about it. Next tournament's Green Bay. I'm heading up there. Um, and it should be a fun tournament. And I'm glad to be home with my daughter. Excited to see me. She's got a birthday coming up here in a couple days. So we're going to celebrate that. So we're going we're gonna to do the drawing here. And we're going to find out who is the winner. Why don't you draw it out, Alexa? Don't look. All right. The winner of the giveaway is John Lockert from Dickinson, North Dakota. He said the best part of the video was, uh, um, so this video is from Fish Addictions, so I posted that. So the best part of that video, he put uh, eating the minnow, but he would like to see leeches eating the next time. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be very good, would it? And then with one word describing the best thing you like about the outdoors, and he put relaxing. So John's going to get all this stuff. Um, if you watch this video, message me. Otherwise, I'll try to message you, and we'll get all this, inf we'll get all this stuff to you. And thanks, John. We'll see you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following, and I appreciate it. Keep those comments coming. See ya.